Joe and Rachel Stauffer share their keto journey and health improvements through motivational storytelling, aiming to support others with similar challenges. Please welcome the two crazy ketos, Joe and Rachel. Thank you, Dave. Before we start, we do want to say thank you to Dave for having this conference. Well, we put him in a corner. We forced did. him. Yeah. Just force him into a corner. We've got to have this conference, right? Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and the other speakers who showed up, but more importantly for you guys to, to actually be supporting this conference, we truly believe in a few years, we're going to look back at this event and say this was a catalyst for change in modern medicine. We're going to look back in 10 years and say this was the Woodstock for modern medicine. Yes, I truly. truly believe that. And you were here. So uh, Dave said, we are the two crazy ketos. We absolutely are, Joe and Rachel. And we should say that we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals. It's kind of weird that this is what a scientist looks like now, right? It's a little bit scary, a little bit scary. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Get this get So this what we are drink. is we are citizen scientists, and we are actually citizen scientists by accident. Um, we both lost a bunch of weight. Rachel's lost over 170 pounds on keto. I lost over 100 pounds. We started our YouTube channel kind of as a joke because our children were getting older, and we were like, what are we going to do? So. Let's start a YouTube channel to kind of tell people what we've done because we got tired of telling people in person, this is what we did to lose, lose weight. And then they would say to us, that's that too doesn't hard. work. Yeah, that's, that doesn't work. But it's kind of funny. There's a lot in this, in this sentence here, reporting our findings on YouTube since July of 2018. We've actually been on the interwebs in our underwear. Like yeah. that's, that's where it will, if you want to report your findings, sometimes you almost have to get naked and you just tell your parents, please don't watch this particular video while we share our findings. So what we want to talk about today is what qualifies you to make a good citizen scientist rather than coming up here and talking about how, like what we have done to be citizen scientists. We want to help you guys all become citizen scientists because the bottom line is like we said earlier, this is going to be an event that people are going to look back on and say, hey, this, ca this was the spark for changing medicine. And the way we do that is by reporting our findings by all of us being citizen scientists. We want to talk about what do we need to do to be a good citizen scientist? So the first one is, is honesty. And here's how I looked uh, formerly as a mad scientist, actually. Um, and honesty is a challenge for somebody who has been a lifelong dieter. When I was eating Reese's peanut butter cups in the bathroom with the door locked on the floor in my own home because I didn't even want my family to know what I was eating, the thought that I need to be honest is challenging, but if I truly want to be beneficial to the people watching me, I got to be honest. I'm going to have to report like this is what I am putting in my mouth and this is the result of it. And we not just honest to ourselves or, or to others, but honest to ourselves. If you've ever been obese and on a diet, the last thing we want to do is honestly look at something and go, yeah, I have a, an addiction to whipped cream. Yes. Asking for a friend, right? <laughs> so, or cheese, or nuts. Or cheese, or nuts, yeah. or anything. We have to be honest with ourselves. So our, device, our advice is donate your health journey to science. I have donated my body to science right now. Not even dead yet. Fully alive, right? Um, and I'm just decided that like whatever you see, and if you see our, our YouTube videos, you see me like hair jacked up, no makeup. This is us. This is real. This is how we live. But I am no longer worried about how I look. I want everybody to see the authenticity because I wake up and I think this isn't for me anymore. This isn't just me battling, you know, pounds on a scale. It's me helping to, to be a channel of information to other people and serve them. And that helps me stay in a right mindset. So we need to focus on our knowledge gain rather than our pounds loss. When I got started on keto, I started keto to lose weight. Six months into it, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm no longer taking arthritis pills and painkillers that I had been taking for 25 straight years. No longer needing a wheelchair or mobility scooter. It happened by accident. Yeah. And we need to focus on that. Clap, and I used to have to push him. Yes. 
So next thing is we have to be objective. And this is really challenging. We have to let evidence and data guide our conclusions rather than personal beliefs or preferences. And I think back to one of the, the things that, that we were able to participate in is we were talk, chatting with Dr. Barry once when we were, I believe we were in, were we in Omaha? We were at, an, at the Omaha conference before it became the, the Heart, Heart to Kill, to Kill conference with Dr. Seaman here this morning. And we were talking about how can we stop maybe demonizing fat? We saw that there was like the pendulum was, sw was swinging back towards high protein and like no fat fat's bad. And so Dr. Berry so graciously reminded us that, hey, I had put a challenge out about beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, but like no one's really taking us up on that. And so we decided that we were going to take the challenge and we were going to be the first people to just like video our whole journey on that and, and show the results. But for somebody who is afraid, like I have lost 170 pounds. I am not interested in putting those back on. And there's a little bit of fear that I was going to have to let the fat in, right? Right. And see what's gonna happen. But I had to be willing to be wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong about fat. Yeah, Dr. Barry had this hypothesis that if we ate nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, that we would not gain body fat. That's but scary. That was a scary thought, because he said you can eat as much as you want. No you tracking. can eat as many times a day as you want, so long as you eat until you're full. And we decided we were gonna put ourselves out there on video and literally show every single thing we ate. But it was a scary thing, and we had to really do that and not cherry pick what was going to happen to us. So our advice is you have to be teachable. I, can I, you guys give yourselves a hand? Because clearly you're here because you're teachable. We can change our minds on things. So the success of a citizen scientist is not measured by a correct hypothesis, but by a willingness to be wrong. And if you've been watching us very long on, on YouTube, uh, raise your hand if you're a Two Crazy Ketos family member up in this piece. All right, awesome. Thank you for being here. So you see, we get it wrong. We get it wrong spectacularly, right? Just super wrong. But you have to be willing to be wrong. So would we currently be in this situation if Ansel Keys would have Hello? been willing to have been wrong with his original hypothesis? Hello. Where would the standard American diet today be if he would have gone, I was wrong? instead of trying to skew the data to prove what he thought, right? So next thing is we have to have a commitment to societal impact. We put ourselves on YouTube. Yeah, it, and realizing that like that picture was before, we're in the same boat. How many people are trying to live longer and be healthier? Is it just us in the room? Or are you got Okay, all right. right. So we're in the same boat when it comes to putting ourselves out there. So it's worth it for us to put ourselves out there. We need to recognize the broader implications of our research on society and public policy. Again, we did this to lose weight. Then we got Rachel's mother to begin a keto lifestyle. We kind of forced it on her, but a type two diabetic for more than 20 years no longer being classified as a type two Hello. diabetic. Yeah. Now it is our mission and our job to help other people. Yeah, and we're really passionate about that. And when you're striving to conduct research that contributes to the advancement of knowledge and the betterment of society, your daily stamina can be strengthened. If you're somebody that's like, man, I, I, I'm gonna come home from this Vegas conference and I know that there's gonna be wind in my sails and I'm, it's, you know, I'm going, yes, I have learned all this information and it's easy to follow through with it. But when you have to like, face an, an, an obstacle once you get home. It's knowing that you're contributing to society that gives you more stamina. That's the motivation. I wake up every morning thinking, I get to speak to other people. Like we're having an, our life has a purpose and it means something. 
So our advice is we need to control the variables. Yes. And we have four minutes left. So okay. we talk do a lot. It. Okay. We do. So we need to collect and we need to report on our personal data, which again, we chose to do that on YouTube, all the good and the bad. We have problems. If we're overeating, if we're eating the wrong foods, you're going to see. You, we put out a vlog today. We ate six grapes in a video. We got so <gasps> much hate because we ate six grapes with our Get off plate. that stage. Okay. So. And here's the most important thing. Do not worry what other people are doing. You have to focus on what you're focusing we on. We talk all the time about stay in your lane, but we got to stay in our lab. Can you imagine how preposterous it would be if somebody was a scientist was just like, I'm coming in here, I'm going to mess with your stuff. I'm going to test, I'm going to touch your all of your stuff in your in your lab. You wouldn't do that, right? We yeah. can stay in our own lab. Which means we have to have the courage. Yes. We have to have courage for people to strongly disagree with us. You're going to ruffle a few feathers. And you know what I have to say to that? This is what I have to say. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm heavily feathered. I'm ready to ruffle some feathers. You also have to be prepared that there's going to be people that scrutinize your findings right? They're going to scrutinize it. Maybe you're already sharing in at around the family dinner table or in your workplace and people are asking you this barrage of questions because they're scrutinizing the data that you are collecting. And then finally, we have to be prepared to personally invest in our efforts. As um, we, Dave talked about earlier, all of your speakers here, they are personally investing to be here. We flew out here on our own dime. You all are personally investing in the future of this conference. We have to be willing to personally invest. Uh, now, our advice is you need to join a scientific community. You're here right now. That is joining the community. Because community is going to help foster an openness to feedback. Yeah, it's more than just encouragement. A lot of times we say, hey, get involved in, in, a, in a group. It could be locally. It could be something that is virtual because it's important for us not just to join a community for motivation or inspiration, but because a community really can help. A community can open the door to cooperative brainstorming and problem solving. Just today, I was chatting with Mark and I was chatting with Shaban about like specific issues that we've come up across like, what do you think? It's because we've surrounded ourselves and put ourselves in, in the way of friendship in order for us to have somebody to ask questions for. Because maybe everything's going great, but you have like one little detail you can address. If you don't have anybody that you can personally ask those questions to, like, how are you going to get those answers? Yeah, as Rachel mentioned earlier, we, it was being at another community event, at a low-carb event, where we had the conversation with Dr. Barry about, hey, what else can we do to stop the demonization of fat? If it wasn't for attending that community event, we would have never tried beef, butter, bacon, and egg. We would have never looked at, is there another option out there? So it's really important to get yourself involved in different communities. Community can help improve the quality and the rigor for your research. If you are trying to like tighten up your own eating and health journey, Getting in community can help make that possible because those people in the community will challenge you. As Dave will say, like we literally cornered him at the Keto Orlando Summit and we're like, Vegas needs a conference. Would you agree? Yeah. I agree. So, so we need it, it next year. It. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then finally, community can provide a safe place that we can begin sharing our findings. Because we do need to share it with somebody. And sometimes when you share it with a loved one, a friend, a doctor, they're not always receptive. They don't always celebrate and cheer you in what you're discovering. But when you are within a keto community, you have people to share it with and they will cheer you on. And so that is the end of our presentation. With 20 seconds to go, we High actually five, dude. did it. Oh my so, god! And the cool thing is, is we actually get to stay up here right now and tell you it's time for a potty break. Oh, I love that! Great news, everybody.